Hello peeps, welcome to Sundays with Sparky. <laughs> Still haven't got an intro for this yet. Uh, don't know if I ever will, but you never know. Maybe one day I'll think of something amazing. Uh, or not. Um, how you doing? How are you doing? Oh really? Oh well, that's that's quite interesting. Um, <laughs> so let's get down to business, shall we? Movies and video games. Uh, which one should we go with first? Okay, I'm gonna movies, video games. Pick one. I'm gonna mix them up in my hands. Which one are you gonna pick? This one. Or this one. This one. This one. Okay. Ah, oh, you picked movies. Ah, oh, congratulations. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. All right. I just don't know. Right. Uh, went to the cinema. I did. I remember. I remember this week. I remember going to the cinema. <laughs> yeah, 47 was so good that I, 47 Ronin even was so good that I completely forgot that I even went to see it uh, last week. So that was good. Uh, this week I went to see 12 Years a Slave, which was brilliant. But I think there were some, I think there were some scenes that could have been either cut completely. Or they could have been like reduced in length because they seem to kind of just go on a bit. Uh, there was one scene which I can tell you about because it doesn't have any spoilers, where the main character, who's looking a bit upset, and you kind of just sort of see him from like here up, he's looking a bit upset, and there's some like out of focus stuff in the background. He's just like. And that's it. <laughs> but it, I mean, but it's longer than that. <laughs> it's like, what was the point in that scene? We know he's upset because of everything else that's happened in the film. You know, it's like, <sighs> it didn't make any sense. But it, and it, it, it made me feel a little uncomfortable because it, he was looking straight at the camera and like looking out into the cinema. And most of the time you don't get that. And it was kind of awkward because I was like, <sighs> This is making me feel a bit uncomfortable, the fact that he's like looking. Anyway, for uh, movies well, that I've watched at home, uh, I've been continuing my Tom Cruise theme. Uh, the first one I watched was, uh, was it this one or was it that one? I can't remember, I think it was this one. It was Collateral with uh, Tom Cruise and Jamie Foxx and also uh, Jada Pinkett Smith and it seemed weird seeing Tom Cruise with grey hair it's like, what the hell? I'm not sure if you'd really call it an action film I guess you'd kind of call it an action film it's like a crime drama slash action film um, Jamie Foxx is a cab driver that kind of gets caught up in something that he really wishes he hadn't um, and it's, I, I, don't, I like the plot, I thought it was good. Oh, and um, Mark Ruffalo's in it as well, which I was completely forgot about. I was like, is that Mark Ruffalo? Because he looks kind of Hispanic. Looks kind of like Mexican, possibly. Because um, he's got his hair all greased back and he's got this little goatee beard. He's got his ear pierced and stuff. And it's just like, is that, is that, is that the guy that played the Incredible Hulk? Because it kind of looks like it, but I can't quite tell. Turns out it was. It was Mark Ruffalo. Um, but yeah, if you haven't seen Collateral, uh, you should. And and Tom Cruise is a bad guy in it. And you don't see him be a bad guy very often. He's usually the hero. And this is a really good... A really good bad guy. It doesn't really make sense, but um, he does the part really well. And it's an interesting character. So, uh, yeah, check it out, it's really good. 
then Minority Report because Minority Report is awesome. I have seen this movie loads of times. This came out in. Let's see if we can find it a bit quicker this time. 2002. Um, it's all about pre crime. They have these three people who can predict the future uh, and they prevent murders from happening before, before they happen, obviously, because that's what's preventing murder. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so they, they prevent uh, a murder from happening because they have a premonition about about what's going to happen and then it's the job of the pre-crime unit to get to that place before the actual murder happens and like and it's all to do with like uh, a little bit of conspiracy and corruption within that and uh, how people are using it to their own ends and stuff like that it's very good. It's kind of futuristic. It's not that far into the future. Um, doesn't actually say it on the back uh, when it's set, but yeah, it's set sometime in the future. And, and this has got um, this has also got uh, the Colin Farrell's in this. Uh, again, I've completely forgotten about that. And uh, he's like the... You think he's the bad guy? Because he kind of comes in from the... Um, like the people that oversee all the police and all that kind of stuff. And he, he shows up and he's like internal affairs or something like that. Uh, and he comes in and he's like snooping around and... No one really likes him, and he, he's causing trouble. And then you th kind of think that he's like the bad guy because uh, he's, you know, annoying everyone, and pissing them off, and him and Tom Cruise kind of like don't like each other like straight away because he doesn't like people sticking his nose in. And yeah, it's good. If you haven't seen Minority Report, then you should because it's fantastic. Uh, I did watch SWAT which sounds like it's going to be the worst film ever. But bearing in mind, it's got Colin Farrell, Samuel L. Jackson, uh, Michelle Rodriguez, and for some reason, LL Cool J. I, I don't know why he's in it particularly, but he is. And, uh, and there's a picture of him with his shirt off on the back of the DVD for, for, <laughs> for no reason. Uh, and uh, and Jeremy Renner's in it as well, and I was like, what the hell, Jer is that Jeremy Renner? It's your basic run-of-the-mill action movie because it's about a SWAT team in Los Angeles. I don't know. It's either LA or New York. It's one. Of, it's always one of those. It's always one of those two places, and it? it's never anywhere else. Occasionally, it'll be like Chicago. But most of the time it's New York or, or LA. So it'll be one of them, I imagine. Um, there's no like landmarks, so it could be any big American city, really. Um, and it's about how... Uh, what is it about? <laughs> I don't really know. There's a, It's Colin Farrell's character is the main character, and it's about how he goes from being in the SWAT to not being in the SWAT to working his way back to getting into SWAT and then the adventure that he goes on with his new SWAT team is basically uh, that in a nutshell it's not the best movie ever but it was quite fun there you go um, but I would highly recommend Minority Report if you haven't seen it because it was awesome Oh. I just thought Vanilla Sky was one of my other favourite Tom Cruise films. I can't remember if I've got that or not. I'm just going to have to go through like all my DVDs and try and find it. Because otherwise that's going to get annoying. Man, the last few days I've been trying to play Hearthstone. I have had no luck whatsoever. I've been trying to like build my own decks and I've been trying out other people's decks and I've just had no luck whatsoever. Like, 
um, I've been wanting to make, uh, wanting to use a priest deck because uh, I don't think I've showcased a priest deck yet in big deck player. In fact, I'm I, I'm certain I haven't. But uh, yeah, so I've not had any luck on uh, on Hearthstone at all, and it's it's quite frustrating because. Um, as I say, I thought, well, maybe I can create my own uh, priest deck, and uh, I used to have one that was that was pretty strong. Um, but again, the meta game has changed, and so it's not as strong anymore. Um, and it kind of, yeah, it's kind of pretty weak. Um, the idea was good behind it. It was all to do with having. Uh, the knife juggler out and then using other minions that spawn minions at the same time so you start using stuff like the imp master or the dragonling mechanic um, and stuff like that so that when you've got a knife juggler on the field you know you're getting that extra one damage out somewhere um, and that all stemmed from a, a video I did is it, I don't even know if it's on this channel. I think it was on the old channel that went wrong. Uh, <laughs> where I'd got two knife jugglers on turn, I think it was turn eight, and then turn nine I brought out a Nixia, which, and she just fills up the rest of, the, of your board with uh, one one dragonlings, or whelps, or whatever you want to call them. So, so it was like, it was like Anixia, and then one of them would throw their knife, and then the other one would throw their knife, and then there was a thing. So then they both throw their knives again, and then there was another one, and they both throw their knives. And it, I don't know how much damage it did, because hang on, you can have seven, so it'd be plus one, two, three, four, five, and then that would have been seven. So there would have been ten damage going out just from putting Anixia down with two jugglers. Um, and then the two jugglers could hit that turn as well. So I was essentially doing 16 damage that turn. Uh, I think he only had like one minion or maybe two minions out, but I think they both died. So it was a one of those plays that is not likely to ever happen again. Uh, and I think that's where uh, my deck kind of failed because I was trying to, I was always trying to recreate that. And most of the time, if you put knife jugglers out, they will die straight away, because people don't want them on, on their field. People do not want to have them staying up for like for too long, because they will just start chucking out those knives. And if you start buffing it, and then yeah, it could go all terribly wrong. So I think that's probably where I went wrong. I was basing it all around like this one combo, this one mechanic to this deck, and it was not a good idea. Anyway. So that's Hearthstone. I didn't do very well. I've not had very good luck with decks I've found or the decks I've tried to build myself. So yeah. Um, so the thing that I wanted to talk about before I started talking about Hearthstone was something that I found on my on Facebook um, that was posted by the uh, the Z Zombie Survival Events. Now these are the people that uh, you may have heard about. Um, I went with some friends of mine. Was it last year or the year before uh, to one of their events that they had um, whether they've got a disused shopping mall I believe it was in Reading I think a disused shopping mall and they have people there dressed as zombies and acting as zombies and they give you airsoft guns um, and uh, you get kind of trained up and stuff by police officers who are basically actors um, and uh, and you go around this shopping mall and and uh, attack zombies or get attacked by zombies <laughs> and it, it was one of the most fun days out I've ever had because um, it was quite scary in, in places and it, oh, it, was a, it was a workout as well I mean I'm not the fittest person in the world by any means uh, but I came out of that very very sweaty indeed uh, but it was so much fun so much fun I, I highly recommend 
doing it if you've never done that before. I don't know if they've got them in the States, but um, if they haven't, then someone needs to get on that because it's fantastic. And I'm sure there's plenty of disused buildings that you can use for that sort of thing in the States. Um, and yeah, so you could, like the zombies would come up and they'll go, arr, 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 and like pretend to eat you or whatever. And you could either just go, oh, I'm out and walk off, or you could like play along. And obviously, obviously I played along. I was like, ah, no, ah, and I'd fall on the floor. I'd be like, ah, ah, ah. Really overact it. <laughs> and then just lie there for a bit twitching. And uh, yeah. But um, yeah, but don't be surprised when uh, when your friends run off and leave you, uh, and you don't realise because they're behind you and they've gone. And you turn around, they're not there anymore. And you turn back, and there's a zombie in front of your face because that's what happened. Anyway, <laughs> the thing that they posted on Facebook, which is what I was supposed to be getting to in the first place, they put a little question out there, which was. Uh, the last weapon you used in a video game is now your weapon for the zombie apocalypse. Uh, so how how well do you think you're going to do? How long do you think you're going to survive? Now for me, the last game I was playing that had a weapon in it, because Hearthstone doesn't really count, because you don't have a weapon in that game. Uh, the thing that I had was, uh, the game I was playing was Metro 2033. Uh, it's one of those games that I played a bit of, decided it was too hard, and then just stopped. I think it was one of those games that I, I was going to make a Let's Play of it and then realised that I wasn't actually very good at it. And I was doing it wrong and I wasn't getting very doing very well and I was getting frustrated. And uh, But now that I'm not doing it as a, a Let's Play or anything like that, I'm actually finding I'm having a lot more fun and a lot more success with it, um, which is a bit weird. So, in the game, um, you get various like uh, revolvers and what else do you get? Uh, like these machine gun type things that have the ammo thing that slides across. Magazine, that's it. Has the magazine that slides across rather than going in from the bottom. Um, but they also have these. Uh, I'm not sure what you'd call them, hydraulic or pneumatic, I'm not sure. Uh, um, but they have these ball bearing guns, so you kind of crank the thing to pump it up, to pump up the, the meters to get more power out of it. Uh, and then it fires these, uh, these ball bearings, which you just find on corpses and lying around and in uh, ammo crates and stuff. And that was the last weapon I used, and I was like, that would be awesome in a zombie apocalypse. Because you never have to worry about it running out of charge, because you just have to pump it up again. So you don't have to worry about like any electricity or batteries or anything like that to power it. I mean, some people were talking about these special weapons from like Halo or you know whatever, and I'm like, well, that's all very well and good, but... What happens if you like run out of ammunition? Then what? Mm. <laughs> it's not like you can go to uh, your, well, especially in, in the UK, you can't go to your local gun shop and buy special ammo for uh, a game, uh, a, a video game like assault rifle, because I'm sure it'll probably take specific type of ammo. Um, Whereas a ball bearing gun, it's literally just ball bearings, and you can pretty much find ball bearings anywhere. And I reckon even if you couldn't find ball bearings, you might be able to find something else that would work just as well. Uh, just little round balls of some description. Um, maybe marbles. I'm not sure marbles would be the best idea, because they might, they might shatter whilst they're in the thing. But even still, they might work. And then you've got glass bullets essentially um, but I was just like yeah that would be pretty good and it's pretty quiet as well so if you were sneaking about um, you could still take out zombies and it had a red dot sight on it not a red dot sight a laser sight 
had a laser sight on it as well. So it's like, it's perfect. It's perfect for that. Because obviously you don't want to make any sounds to alert any zombies. Um, so if you're sneaking about, headshotting zombies, not making any noise. I mean, the only problem is obviously you're not going to get that ammo back. So that's my question for you for this week. Is uh, what was the last video you ga game you played that you had a weapon in, uh, and how well do you think you'll do if that was your weapon in a zombie ap apocalypse? Apocalypse. Um, because I think I'd do pretty well. Uh, I mean, I'm looking around my my room, thinking, I wonder what actually does have ball bearings in, and I don't think there's actually that much. So I'm not sure how well I'd do. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, let me know how you, how well you think you would get on. Um, I'm going to leave it here. Uh, I will thank you very much for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for some more videos coming up this week. Uh, this is going to be some more contrast. There's going to be some more Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls beta. Um, not sure if there'll be a big deck player this week because as of yet I haven't actually found a deck that I think is good enough to, to show you guys. Um, Plus, my run of bad luck has kind of made me think, oh, let's see. So, if I do find one, then I'll make one. If I don't, then it'll probably be the week after. Um, I've also got an idea for something that I'll also want to do in the next uh, few coming weeks, and um, we shall see if that actually works out. Depends out how I want. But, yeah, so thanks for watching, and I shall see you again next week. Bye bye.